If you're sick of RVs whose bathrooms are sized for skinny mini little butts, this one might just come with a Sir Mix-a-Lot seal of approval. Whip crack! And at least 37% of you have that song stuck in your head now. You're welcome. Josh, the RV nerd here with Bish's RV. I'm in Coldwater, Michigan today with some updates here on the 25 RBHL. But uh, we have these models uh, all over the place, whether it's in the Wildwood moniker or the Salem moniker. Two RVs that are the exact same thing. Heritage Glen and Hemisphere are identical. So what are we looking at here? It's just over 30, actually I think it's 31 foot on the nose, so it's not terribly sized. The wide stance stability axles really do a nice job of helping um, offset that to give it some good ride and handling. The weight category falls into uh, a lot of late model tow package general half ton uh, capability, but it's, it's little fine-tuning updates they've applied to this this year that made me want to re-record it. Like, getting rid of the carpet in the slide, I think, is a major uh, update on this one. Not to mention the fact that, like I said, there's just not a lot of RVs have a really big bathroom back there. And and maybe a lot of people are going to say, I don't need something that big. But there's, I think some folks are like, I like that extra space where when I get out of the shower, I actually have room to dry off. I can bend over and put on a pair of pants without hitting my head on a cabinet or something like that. This one is absolutely fantastic for that. Or maybe like you've got um, like a, a little walker or something like that. You need a little extra room to move around. This bathroom can do things that other RVs very often just can't. Now, as a result, it is a little bit longer. It might be a little bit heavier, but it gives you that big time living space. And when you see the storage in this one, not just in the, the living room and the kitchen, but in the bathroom as well, you start to understand where that extra link might just be worth picking it up. And my two cents, 30 feet, 31 feet, probably not going to be enough to make or break the difference. But beyond that, again, carpetless, we're looking at it with an optional solar package today. No floor heating vents, enclosed heated belly tank heaters, and a host of other things. Before I get too far along, though, I want to ask you to let me know as we go, what is your favorite thing and your least favorite thing as we go through this today? Leave me a comment, let me know. In the meantime, let's get started. Now, on one hand, when like every travel trailer manufacturer and their brother makes a floor plan like this. Some of them making several variants of it, like Jayco comes to mind, J Flight, J Feather, White Hawk, Eagle HT, four different Jayco travel trailers all have a variant of a floor plan like this because it is that popular. And that's kind of lame in a sense. You feel like it, it's same, same. Everyone's just copying one another. But the fact is they do it all a little bit differently. You know, I, I get the idea of like floor plan fatigue, uh, folks, I've been doing this for pushing 14 years now at the time of this filming. I certainly feel floor plan fatigue. But overall, what keeps me coming back is the fact that they all do it a little bit differently. So, like, what is Wildwood bringing to the table? What's Heritage Glen and Hemisphere bringing to the table? How about the fact you don't have to upgrade your air? There's, like, big air conditioner, standard. Boom. Now, second air, still optional, but big AC is available. And um, the uh, if you really want to blot the sun out in this, let me. I'm gonna slowly roll you over to the left here, just to let you know, so you're not getting motion sick. But you got the blackout roller shades all over the place in this. And did you notice how those windows all open for airflow? <clears throat> it's those kind of differences and detail. Pardon me, I'm clearing my throat. I'm getting over a case of the crud. Uh, well, at least while I'm recording this, what you don't realize is sometimes I may have already recorded this video like six or eight weeks ago and finally had a chance to get it out because I just juggle a lot of content, basically. Uh, for the 23 season, once again, they made this finally, uh, you know, uh, totally pet friendly, I think, because they got the carpet out of the slide. They had ventless flooring before, but now basically the RV has... No carpeted flooring anywhere. Uh, none of that shag carpeting kind of stuff, as it were. Now, uh, over here up in the uh, the kitchen area, this is a six and a half foot tall camper, but that skylight when you're standing in the kitchen, it does kind of help open things up and feel a little bit bigger. But like everybody who builds this floor plan, it's painfully lacking in campsite windows. There's just there's no question about that. That's definitely something this doesn't do uh, fantastically. I like the big drawer below the oven, but that is one of those smaller, I'm going to call it 16-inch Easy Bake Ovens. I think, was it Mr. Steve Z? Which one of our viewers came up with that Easy Bake Oven phrase? Because I, that's funny. I like it. Um, TV, you are staring straight across from it, and with my... I stared directly at the ceiling light above me. I bet you even got to see that in the reflection on the TV, didn't you? 
I'm such an idiot. My point is, uh, you've got a clear shot at the tele television, just like I had a clear shot at that light directly above me right there. Uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and pivot and clear up the, uh, the living room here. Now, if you'd prefer a, a trifold sleeper sofa, you can get it. Um, if you'd prefer a cuddle-compliant theater sofa, they don't offer it. If you'd prefer a table and chairs, you can get it. So uh, keep in mind, this is just one potential configuration on this RV. Then we get back here to the baby got bath room. Hmm, should have figured that out. I'll work that out on my own time. But, holy crap, Batman. That is a massive, massive rear bathroom space back here. They do the same bathroom, exactly same bathroom, and a slightly shorter version of this very same floor plan as well. And if you notice, um, I was a little worried about the, uh, the headroom in here, but uh, I was doing my side bends and sit-ups with my head, and I never cracked my noggin on nothing, which is uh, pretty darn nice. And additionally, if uh, all the storage in this bathroom, start looking at all this. Like, you got the handy little pocket right there above the, uh, the butt napkin roller. But also above that, you've got some serious linen space going on in this bathroom. And there's even a shelf in that, so you can really, uh, you know, double up on everything. That would have been an easy opportunity, by the way, to do the Sir Mix-a-Lot double up and another whip crack. But I think I've milked that cow enough today, don't you? Uh, this is what I'm talking about, though. All of the storage space in this bathroom is just absolutely fantastic. That extra closet, like, because this RV is longer, they had room to put a big chunk of storage there and some extra drawers. Because this is here, it extended the whole bathroom, pushed everything back. You had the other linen cabinet to our right, since you're currently standing in the shower with me, which is, you know, a little bit creepy. But while we're talking about storage... It's got it in glorge. First of all, the pantry tainment center in this, well, it's nerd sized. I mean, I can literally stand in that thing. <laughs> it is big. Those are big, deep cabinet shelves behind it. But what's kind of nice about that is like, it can be a little bit of a coat closet. It could be a little bit of a pantry. It, you, you could multi-purpose that in a couple different ways, which I think is just really fantastic. Um, the uh, the way that they uh, gave you a big wastebasket space in the kitchen and plenty of drawer coverage is great. And notice the easy reach power outlets um, in that, uh, or just above the, the kitchen countertop. Now we're looking at the gas electric two-way refrigerator and freezer to, no, Nope, sorry, I got that wrong. You have the option of um, swapping in an eight cubic foot gas electric fridge freezer. What we are looking at today is the uh, larger, faster cooling, uh, travel safe, 12 volt DC compressor fridge. Not as boondock friendly, however. Um, still better in terms of power consumption than a residential fridge, but nowhere near the power sipping of a uh, uh, gas electric fridge on propane mode. Now the TV hookup in the bedroom is just in a weird spot, but there's not really anywhere else they could put it. What I do like though, is they give you the full on uh, privacy wall. You know, if someone's like, hey, uh, what's going on? I hear some grunting in there. You're like, um, just, Really having a hard time with this fitted sheet, Grandma. I'll be out in a minute. Um, you know, uh, whatever the case may be. Also, a handy little light switch right over here, right inside the door. Right when you walk in, you see the TV backer space up there. Um, that, however, that is a camp queen. That's a bummer. It is what it is. Someone's going to ask maybe, is there room for a true queen? I think there is. I think you're going to do a butt scoot boogie to get around. But... I think you can probably make that work. And did you see those uh, those pockets up by the headboard area right there? I am such a huge fan of those because just a nice like I like I, I have a phone charger. I keep my phone charger right next to my bed all night, and uh, it, it, it's nice to be able to have that so close at hand, and not have to string cables everywhere. Now, squishing my butt between the uh, the mirror and the wall over here to try to get you this angle, you should see the little twist them up bathroom yoga tricks I have to pull off to get you some of these shots sometimes. Taking a look at the travel access, obviously, by virtue of the fact that we're back here, you can discern that we can easily get back into the bathroom from the entry door uh, right over there. Uh, majority of our storage is going to be accessible, so like if you need to get into it to pack it up, it's kind of friendly that way. If you need to stop at a travel stop to get to, you know, your refrigerator, your sink, 
The drawers are in a nice position. A lot of manufacturers who build this floor plan, I have found when the slide closes, you can't reach the drawers, which can be a little bit of a problem. Not major, but a little thing. The one major hitch in this one's travel and giddy up is the bedroom. Unless you open the slide, you flat can't get to it. And I wish that wasn't the case, but I do hope you at least appreciate the fact that we took the time to close this up to show you what's good and what's not so good so that you can make the best and most educated decision possible of all that money you worked really hard to earn. So stepping back outside here, let's talk some towing specs as I've, I've kind of developed a habit of doing that as we step outside, but it just feels right. Um, again, it's about 31 foot long and with the wide stance axles and the weight categories on this, it feels fairly safe in many situations uh, to call this one potentially half ton towable. Now to qualify that a little bit, in my head what I'm kind of picturing is a late model, good tow package half ton, and fairly mild terrain. I'm not talking mountains, and I'm not talking 40 mile an hour cross breezes. This is really starting to reach that point where if you did start looking up more toward the realm of three quarter ton, I ain't, I ain't gonna fault you for it. I don't know that that's the wrong answer. I think some half tons could work pretty well here. Um, I've been accused of being a little conservative with my towing recommendations lately. And I tell you, as um, if you watch my older videos, I was a little more willy nilly with them. But as I've traveled to more of our locations and I've seen more different terrain and um, you know experiences, it's kind of changed my perspective on a lot of things. So that's my two cents, but you always need to apply it through your filter. Now, uh, the awning looks like they should have extended it to the back of the RV, right? That, that ain't a small awning. Actually, it's a pretty fairly sized awning. And as long as we're standing here, right under that kitchen window, in the L shape of the kitchen countertop, there is a chunk of space that can't be used for anything else. What's kind of cool, they opened that up uh, for a little miniature camp kitchenette. Now, depending on what you're doing, if you are cooking and you want to reach up to get a drink at the same time, it may bring a whole new definition to the phrase hot toddy. But uh, for the most part, People seem to get along just fine with it. I'm clumsy enough, I'd probably end up with burns on my uh, forearms like uh, like some fancy restaurant chef. By the way, you ever see chefs roll up their sleeves? They're, uh, they always have burns. You know, it's just gonna happen, reaching in and out, moving fast, it, it happens. You may have noticed in that little mini fridge, there was the uh, garden sprayer hose, that hooks up uh, right here. And they put Uncle Gary's drunken leash latch over here, right under the middle of the awning, so when the poor fool passes out after having one too many hot toddies, uh, he's not going to, you know, uh, suffer from sun exposure and, and cause issues again. That hasn't happened uh, since we took that trip uh, over to Maine, and we all know how that turned out, I think. Now, for the 23 season, they've updated to Goodyear Endurance Radials, uh, which is a nice touch. Although the spare tire um, is is uh, still an import tire, your main four tires are the, on the ground. Those are Goodyear's, which is, uh, uh, I think, overall a positive direction move. They've long had a walkable roof, but a lot of people didn't know it because they never gave you any access to it. They're still not including the ladder, but they are at least including that little prep mount right there for one of those portable telescopic jobs. Now, taking a little bit of a page, uh, maybe they weren't the originators of this, but one of the first ones I saw do this kind of thing was actually Rockwood. Basically a centralized water docking uh, collection right there. Um, notice too, they have put all of the uh, electrical stuff either above or beside the water hookup stuff. Uh, a lot of manufacturers will put the electrical stuff below the water stuff. And I get that when I say that, when you look at it, it looks and sounds super, super wrong and stupid and dangerous. But consider the fact that like, if you have this RV plugged in at a park and it's raining, you probably don't run out and unplug the, uh, the RV because it's made to deal with that. Now, I also don't like tempting fate where I don't have to. And I do have uh, one bit of hard knock news here for us. If we look back here, this is the outlet for the black and gray tank for the bathroom, but up there at the very front of the slide out? Well, we see that the kitchen gray tank does drain up here. Whether it was cost savings or an engineering nightmare or whatever the case, I don't know. The fact is they don't cross bleed together and they don't come out a single uh, outlet. One thing I did notice here when I took a knee though, 
is uh, how you've got that little protective flange right there where the slide floor matches the slide wall. That is one of those things where if the RV is exposed to rain when the slide is out over a long period of time, it will prevent that slide floor from wicking water nearly as easily and basically prevent the slide floor from rotting itself out from those outside edges inward. If you watch uh, some of my older used RV reviews, I don't have quite the opportunity to do those like I used to now, but um, uh, that, that's something that I would actively hunt for. That's one of those things when you're shopping for a used RV, go outside under the slide out and like grab it aggressively on those edges and see if they're soft. That could be a sign. If they're solid, you're good. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Oh, we looked at the underbelly. The underbelly is forced air heated. It does have radiant uh, barrier layering and there are holding tank heaters standard on every single holding tank in every Heritage Glen and Hemisphere model. So if this one's just a little bit too big for you, they make a thing called a 22 RBHL. Basically the same floor plan, but uh, like just one chair, like either a sofa or a dinette, not both. And it shrinks it down a little bit. If you need something a little bit bigger, maybe take a look at the 271. That's an opposing slide rear living room with an island and true queen bed in a private bedroom up front and all kinds of things. So. That's one of the cool things about this family of RVs. Whether it's bunks or couples models, they have one of the, like it's like a murderer's row of floor plans. Every floor plan I look at, I'm like, man, that's a good floor plan. Like they have a dynamic lineup. And I think that they're an underappreciated brand out there, which is why I've been, I've been really singing their praises lately. And the updates they made for the 23 season, I think are absolutely on point. And I think they're doing what needs to be done. They're doing it the right way. Did they make it all the way there for you? Do they need to go a little bit further? What are, where are they nailing it? Where are they failing it? Let me know. And if you've appreciated the fair way that we're showing you both sides of that equation today, hit that subscribe button, and I'd love to see you next time. Till then, though, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Bye.